and I'm Thomas, and you're with the Chattanooga Public Library. And today we are going to be doing a really fun DIY with also some history facts in there. So we are going to be making an ancient Egyptian cartouche. So Thomas, what is a cartouche? So a cartouche is like an Egyptian nameplate, um, just a little oval um, that was usually done with either clay, metal, or even just carved on walls. But uh, it's it has Egyptian hieroglyphs in it. And so I have an example here. So this is obviously not my name. This is just something that I have around my house. So this is kind of the inspiration that I'm going off of today, but we are going to be spelling out our names. So we're gonna go over some supplies and instructions to make our clay. And then we are gonna start making our cartouches. And Thomas is gonna tell us some very interesting history facts during that process. So, ready? I'm excited. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so the supplies that you're going to need to make your salt dough, you are going to need all-purpose flour, two cups. We're going to need just regular table salt. That's going to be a half a cup. Then you're going to need three-fourths cup warm water. Warm is very important. Some measuring spoons, a big bowl, a big spoon, and then that's going to be for our actual dough. So once we get our dough made, then we can start actually making our cartouche. And for that, this is kind of up to you. So I have a few different fun supplies that I'm gonna be using for mine. Um, got a rolling pin, got a bamboo stick. You could also use um, a toothpick. I've got a sharp knife, but you don't have to use a sharp knife. Uh, but you just want stuff that you can use to carve into your salt dough. So do you have all those things, Thomas? Yes. I'm at a slightly different. I'm using a flathead screwdriver. Of course, like the end of the paintbrush will work just fine, I'm sure. And then I got a regular butter knife. So one last supply that you're going to need is going to be an oven. So if you want to go ahead and have your adult turn the oven on to 300 degrees, because once we make our salt dough and then turn it into a cartouche, we're going to have to bake it before painting it. All right, so go ahead and do that, and we're going to go start making our dough. First thing that we're gonna need for our salt dough is going to be taking our all-purpose flour and our salt and mixing them together. So two cups of all-purpose flour to a half a cup of salt dough. So you can go ahead and add that into your big bowl and just mix the two powders together until they're nice and combined. But once you have your two powders combined, that's when we are going to slowly start adding our three-fourths cup of warm water. Um, once it becomes too hard to mix with your spoon, that's when it's time to get a little messy. Get your hands on in there and start kneading it just like you would pizza dough. We've got our salt dough. I'm gonna go wash my hands. Thomas, I feel like you should probably do the same. And then when we come back, we will start making our cartouches. One of the very fun aspects about making your own cartouche is figuring out what your name looks like in hieroglyphics. So we have given y'all a form on our Make Play Read Learn website that shows the different translations from letters that we use to hieroglyphics. I'm going to figure mine out. I'm going to write it on my piece of parchment paper and kind of draw my hieroglyphics next to it just so that I can have it in the back of my mind but that'll also give me a chance to practice. But go ahead and practice and figure out how your name looks in hieroglyphics. Now, Thomas, question for you. Yes. When people are reading hieroglyphics, do, we, do you read it in the same way that we read text? So there's two ways you can do it. It's either you can go from most commonly seen is from top to bottom in a straight row, but they also did it from left to right. More traditionally, it's read from top to bottom. So if your first name starts with a C, you would put it at the top and the rest of the letters would go underneath it. Pretty different than how we read our text, so yeah. also another good reason to practice. <laughs> and when you're using this chart, um, just remember that it's a phonetic Alphabet is won't so it won't translate the exact same. For instance, my name Thomas has a H in it, but 
but I'm not going to put it in there because you don't pronounce the H in Thomas. So you have to think about it phonetically, how it would sound rather than letter for letter. But it's interesting because hieroglyphics could be used like two different ways. It's either each symbol can stand for something different and they had thousands of different symbols or they also had a phonetic where each symbol made a certain sound. So depending on context, it could get pretty complicated on whether if you're the vulture meant a, you're looking at a vulture or you're looking at an A sound. Ooh, <laughs> that's fun and tricky and kind of like a puzzle that I don't know I would want to try to complete. Mm -hmm. That's probably why it took so long to figure out, like translate ancient Egyptian language because it's, it's complicated. <laughs> language is complicated. <laughs> language is complicated. It's the sun. It's, oh my god! My, my You're just so cool. So. I'm jealous. Okay. They're not all the same size, but I guess that's why we practice. That's why we practice. All right, so we've practiced. Let's go ahead and roll out our salt dough. Um, the thickness kind of depends on you. So depending on your thickness that you roll your salt dough out, that's also going to change with your baking time. Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to make mine probably about like a quarter inch thick. Let's try it out. Let's see. Now, if you don't have a rolling pin at home, that's completely okay. You can also use a can. You could use a cup. All right, I got mine. Oh, wow. Okay, that's nice and big. Huge. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to go with mine kind of like the size of a hand. All right, so now is the time that we can go ahead and start carving. If you don't want to carve, what you could do is take some of your salt dough, roll it out into kind of like thin snakes, and then make your hieroglyphics 3D, which would be kind of cool, um, but it's up to you. So I'm going to kind of carve and then maybe add some 3D effects. But while we do this, I'm going to let Thomas take over and give us some very fun history facts about hieroglyphics and ancient Egypt, anything and everything. Egyptians were ancient civilization. Um, they were around thousands of years ago. The first writing that came from them was about 5,000 years old. So we didn't really know much about their language until late 1700s when the Rosetta Stone was found. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of it. The Rosetta Stone had a bunch of different languages on it. Um, Greek, Roman, Egyptian. But that was what helped archaeologists and historians decipher Egyptian language and how we know what we're, that we are actually spelling things that say our name in Egyptian. Do you know like what the process was of them figuring that out? Was it kind of, you know, like those word games where it's all scrambled up? Right. And out? I think there's a lot of like deductive reasoning, but in ancient Egypt, mostly the, it was the scribes who did all the, the writing for the pharaohs and these were, usually some kind of royalty, um, mostly male, um, but there is examples of female scribes and even female doctors in ancient Egypt that they've talked about as far as ancient civilizations go compared to like Greece or Mesopotamia. Women actually had a pretty high, high role in society. They could be emperors or empresses. They could, they own property, they could rule. One theory is about clay tablets and why they're used is because if they messed up or if it's something that was only temporary, like if they're taking ledgers for um, transport of tax documents that could be changed, they could just easily wet it again, erase it, and then start over. I'm fairly satisfied with mine, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. Mine's a little bit bigger than 
what I anticipated, but it looks cool. As long as it looks cool. All right. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if you can oh my god, that looks so cool! Thanks. It's so, it's big. It's like the size of this paper. Okay, I'm rethinking mine, and I want to make mine bigger now because you, you're yeah, okay. <laughs> like um, a perfect size. Yeah, it's very small. Um, I'm gonna have to go back in and redo this one. Just put a little bit more detail in there. Um, but then next step is going to be putting it in the oven. And like okay. I said, that's going to depending on the thickness that you made, it's gonna change the baking time, but I would recommend for about an hour. So once you put it in the oven for an hour, let it cool, and then you can decorate it. So that's what we are gonna do with ours. So we will check back in after ours are done baking. Awesome. Yay. All right, everybody. So Thomas and I are officially done with our cartouches. Um, they have baked, we've painted them, and so now we are ready to show them off. All right, so Thomas, I would love to see yours. This is mine. I chose green and blue. Beautiful. Um, mine took a little while to bake. It took about an hour and a half at 300 just because it was really thick. But it turned out pretty well besides a little couple deformities. Awesome. I love it. All right. So Let's see yours. This one's mine. Ooh. Ooh. Very shiny. <laughs> it's very shiny. I decided to go with gold and black because those are my two favorite colors. And also I just kind of thought it would be mildly on brand. Um, so my hieroglyphics are a lot smaller than Thomas's, and so I did find that that was a little bit, um, uh, whenever I baked it, came out a little punky fresh, but right as I put the black on top of it, you could absolutely see it. So I love this project, and I hope that everyone at home, if you do this, go ahead and take a picture and tag us on Facebook or Instagram. All right. Thank you. Hope you guys have fun. Bye. Bye, everybody.